Welcome everybody to Fire Talk. Today we're going to be talking about Jack Samaro as he was just named the opening day starting center fielder. Now this is for the Soul Series. However, I do think he's probably going to open in, you know, what is it, like a week? I think Thursday. So yeah, he's he's the Padres center fielder to start the season. Barring a trade, um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's the guy there. Uh, the Padres desperately need left-handed hitting and he's going to provide that. So today we wanted to break it down. We wanted to talk a little bit about our personal projections for him, what he's projected to do by fan graphs, talk about his just amazing spring training and kind of like look at some other prospects that came up early and like what they actually did. Uh, Cause I think everyone, everyone has just decided that he's going to come up and be Fernando Tatis. Um, and that's, that's a little unrealistic. So I'll start it out. Chase, I, I'm going to let you go. Um, let's just talk about his spring first. And when you look at his spring training, he came out, he absolutely balled. He had a, a nine, a 995 OPS. That's a 163 WRC plus. That's just ridiculous numbers. You got to see a lot of power from him. Uh, he had a couple home runs. Uh, he had three over 350. I mean, he was just, he, he won the job. That's, that's the biggest thing. And that's what we talked about is like, we wanted to see how a lot of these young guys would do in spring. Cause they're at the, you know, they're at the point where it's like, are they going to go win the job? He won the job. Uh, Brito won the job. I, I think so, at least. I think he's your your fifth starting pitcher. But I think we saw a lot of these young guys kind of rise up and and take their spots. Um, so Jackson Merrill definitely did that. But Chase, you're looking at to, you're looking into him. What do you kind of project out of him this season? And then we can get into specific numbers. But just as a player, what do you kind of like? What are you thinking about right now? I hope he just becomes like the solid MLB floor, like the MLB average kind of player in his first year. He's going to be 20 years old. He's going to be in the MLB. We've seen very little 20-year-olds break the MLB and actually succeed within their first year to like above average expectations. We've seen like Nando, Acuna, Soto, unfortunately his name, Wander Franco. Um, You just don't see a lot of young guys breaking into the league and being like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be a star player right off the bat. Even very fewer in their first year in the MLB, despite how old they are. Like Corbin Carroll was nearly an MVP, or he was an MVP candidate his rookie year. You're not not really going to get that. He had an amazing spring, like 350, nearly 1,000 OPS. That's not going to happen. Let's... Let's go into the cautionary tale of what Jabari Blash was every single spring training. Jackson Merrill's a lot better of a player than Jabari Blash was. But Jari, Jabari Blash would come in and be like, yeah, I had a 1,100 OPS during spring, hit nine bombs, have a couple uh, games with like two home runs each. Yeah, he never cracked an MLB roster for more than like three months. So that's... Spring was a very important indicator on where his swing was, how well he's hitting the ball, and how hard he's hitting the ball, which is great. When you look at the competition he faced, yeah, he did face some big leaguers, but most of the time big leaguers use spring training as, you know, hey, I'm working on this pitch, I'm working on my mechanics, I'm working about getting back into strength, lengthening out my arm, you know, where's my velocity at, how's my off speed, what do I need to work on? They're not going into it like a fully prepared. So... I think he's going to struggle a little bit, but nothing crazy. And then towards the end of the season, if he's up the entire time, I think, you know, we'll see him be really solid. The kind of year I expect out of him, we were just talking about this a little bit before. I'm, I am a little bit higher on Jackson Merrill kind of year. I said, like, maybe on the high end, the absolute high end of the OPS scale, like he's going to hit like a 770. Hopefully on the low end, be like 640-ish. That was kind of league average, and I wanted it to be league average because we could desperately use a league average guy at center field, 740. Because that was that was the NL OPS average last year was a 740. If we can get that and some solid defense, he's not going to replace Trent Grisham when he was defensively, but he'll be good. He's quick. He has an arm. He'll learn a little bit more of how Petco plays as the year goes out. He might struggle just a little bit, but – I think overall he's going to be a solid defensive player. He's going to be a decent at-bat. I'm not expecting anything crazy out of him. He doesn't need to be anything crazy. We have Nando. We have X. We have Kim. We have Machado. We have Campy. We have decent bats. So as long as there's no pressure on him to be an all-star, I think he's going to be fine. 
Yeah, and that's kind of dude. That's kind of where I'm at with him too. And I think you 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 know you brought up Corbin Carroll. Well, Corbin Carroll in 2022, uh, he did play in the in the majors a little bit, but he got called up late. And this is uh, Merrill's going to turn 21 in about a I think a month from tomorrow. I think is his birthday. Um, so he's going to be 21 for the majority of this season. In 2021 for Corbin Carroll, he had over 400 for he had 442 plate appearances between double a AA and triple a and he had over he posted over in a thousand ops then he got called up to the majors had like i think he played like a month basically like kind of like september call-up type deal he posted an 830 ops and then last year he played all year one rookie of the year was an absolute monster over a 750 ops let's be real corbin carroll is not a fair comp like it's not a guy that you would be like well jackson Merrill's like hopefully he can come up to this corbin carroll is a ridiculously elite prospect he was crazy he was i think he was our pick for rookie of the year i want to i think i think he was kind of like almost like a lock going into the year for rookie of the year yeah. um but he was at that point where it was like dude this guy's gonna come up and he's gonna be a monster they gave him that fat extension he was ready to go um and he, he has a better bat like he just has a little bit better tool so i don't think he's like the best comp when you're looking at him uh and i think that like you know you start looking at like okay what what are the actually like what is fan graphs for instance projecting from Jackson Merrill. And I think a lot of Padres fans will will hate this and be like, dude, this is ridiculous. This is not even close to what he's going to post. They're projecting, Fancrafts is projecting an 87 WRC plus, and they're projecting him to be under a one more player. Or I'll give you the, the stat line. It's a 251 average, a 294 on base percentage, and a 383 slugging. That's not... That's bad. That's I mean, that's under a 700 OPS. That's like a it's like a 670 OPS, 680 OPS in that range. So they're not expecting a whole lot out of him, and that's because he's young, dude. I mean, Corbin Carroll last year when he won, when he won Rookie of the Year had a whole other year of baseball experience. Um, had you know it was kind of like just knocking on the door to be like, okay, he's going to be elite immediately. Last year, Jackson Merrill had a 770 OPS between High A and Double A. So. I'll say this. I think my expectations for him are a little bit higher. I think that he will crack the 700 OPS mark because I think if you just look at his numbers and you're like, well, he wasn't that great last year. If you remember, he had a really bad slump for a while. Um, and then he came out of that and he was, he was really good kind of to close out the year. And then the other thing was he, he was awesome in spring training and he looks like he's grown a lot. Look, he looks like he's a much better player. Um, and so if I'm going to give him a number, I'm going to say he's going to post 710 OPS. Um, I think the average is about right. 250 260 i think there's going to be you know not a ton of pop from his bat but that's the thing is that if he comes up at 21 years old and is your everyday starting center fielder learning to the position this offseason provides you with a lefty bat and posts over a 700 ops that is it is a pretty big win for the padres and i don't think i don't think people are going to feel like that i think people are going to be like wow that's so disappointing he wasn't good blah 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 Guys, most of these guys take a while to perform. And I brought this up when Isaac and I were talking one time, but Ellie De La Cruz posted a 710 OPS last year. 710. That's what he posted. And he was hyped up insane. His numbers, and he had a bunch of at-bats in AAA, and he was tearing the cover off the baseball in AAA, and that's what he posted last year. Um, that was, I believe that was at 21 years old. So he'll be, he's like a, you know, he's like a year older than Merrill. So it's like last year was his same year. But that's like the kind of the expectation that we should have for a lot of these guys. The Corbin Carrolls, the Fernando Tatises, they don't come around that often. And I don't think going into the season with the expectation like Jackson Merrill's gonna he's gonna post it over 800 OPS. I think that's you're just setting yourself up to be disappointed and feel like this guy's not producing like you think he should. If he posts Chase, if he posts a 770 OPS, that would be absurd that the, the Padres would be so pumped they would have a young controllable player that just showed that he was an above average hitter from the from the jump at 21 years old that would be insane you said like 740 if he's league average once again that's awesome he's on a cheap contract he's going to develop he's going to get better he has a lot of room to grow and I think that's kind of what we're looking at so I think I'm going to say 710 and I think if he cracks 700 I think we should all say you know what let's say he plays like you know almost the whole year not like a platoon player, but he's like not quite every day. Like he's play, pretty much your everyday center fielder. He has over a 700 OPS and he gives you 450 at bats, 400 at bats, whatever that is. And he has 10 to 15 home runs and he plays pretty solid defense and he looks comfortable in center. He's checking the boxes for, 
for an everyday player next year too. So that's the thing about this this whole move. So that's what I'm expecting from I'm trying to give you real ex- realistic expectations for what we should expect out of Jackson Merrill. And that's what I think he's going to bring. But Chase, what else are you thinking on on the Jackson Merrill front? Because I feel like a lot of people are, I feel like a lot of people are just expecting him to come up and immediately be like Fernando level talent. And that's, that's all that you're setting yourself up to be disappointed, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. I think baseball savant is being a little, a little rough on him. A 294 on base percentage is really, really low. From what we saw, or from what I saw whenever I saw him, he was really picky at the plate. He didn't swing and miss a ton, or he did swing and miss, but he wasn't chasing a ton. He walked a couple times. I think he has a better eye for the plate and plate discipline than Fangrass is projecting. Because like a 294 OPS, that's what, like a 5% walk rate? That's that's a really low walk rate. Like you're not walking at all, you're chasing or... That's that's a really low walk rate. I think he's gonna do a little bit better than that. I think he's gonna crack like a three ten to three thirty OPS uh, on base percentage, and then his power is where everything else is gonna kind of decide where he gets on for OPS plus. If he can get to like a three twenty five on base, and then maybe crack a four hundred slugging, which is is possible. I don't think he's going to hit a ton of home runs. I think he's going to be a gap to gap hitter, kind of just striping the ball down the gaps. If he can just make hard contact and hit gaps, he can easily break a 720 OPS. And plus the home runs, he might get to 750. But anything over 730 is going to be a blessing. Honestly, if he can break a 330 OPS or on base percentage, that is insane. If he can break even 400 slugging, that's even better. We're not going to expect uh, anything above a 770 OPS for a rookie. If he if he hits 730, 740, that's going to be within my expectations above Matt's and way above Fangraphs or uh, Baseball Savant. It's going to be a really, really good really really good rookie year and plus you have a lefty center fielder you get your lefty bat who can provide you some power and decent offense on a cheap deal like matt said that's all you could ask it for in an organization like we need cheap contracts that can provide that and that's jackson Merrill. yeah and and final thing i'll bring up if you're like if you guys are like wow these guys these guys are jackson Merrill haters let me tell you why this is actually such a massive win for the Padres if he does this. Let's say he posts, I'll give this chase. Let's say he hits fan crafts expectations, right? Which I think they're like 670 OPS, not that good. Just want to let you all know that over the last two seasons, Trent Grisham in over 100 plate appearances has posted a seven, a 647 OPS. So if no, he I think hit, he said 100, I think he meant 1,000 plate appearances. I meant 1,000, yes, 1,000 plate appearances over the past two seasons. That's what he's posted. He's posted a 191 batting average, a 300 on the dot on base percentage because he does walk a lot, but he doesn't ever get on base hitting wise. And his OPS, dude, it was a 647 over the past two years, 300 games played. Like, so if he does, if he does like fan graphs expectations, he's still a better offensive player than Trent Grisham was for the past two years as not like a platoon guy. No, but as your every sing, every day starting outfielder. You know, that's like a hundred averaging like 150 games a year. So yeah, dude, I, I think that like the expectations, like they have to be a little bit lower just because, and the reason I always say it is cause like, I feel like he's going to come up and he's not, he's not going to be insane. And everyone's going to be like, Oh, th- why would, why are they hyping this guy up? It's like, guys, he's, he's where he should be at. Like we should be excited. We should be pumped about this. Um, And hopefully, I mean, hopefully like he balls out and he's great, but like, I just think that that's, that's kind of where I'm at, but It'll be interesting to see. That's kind of that's kind of all I got on him. Uh, Chase, you have anything else you want to add? I did bring up Trent Grisham, so maybe you want to comment on old old Trent Grisham there. No, I don't think there's going to be as much pressure on him as Trent Grisham because they kept they're like, yeah, Trent Grisham is doing great. He's going to bounce back this year. He changed his swing. He's done this. He's going to be this all star player that we traded him to be. Jackson Merrill is just coming into the league. He's not expected to tear the team. Not expected to do all the heavy lifting. He's got a ton of guys to do that for him. So he can be a little bit more comfortable in his plate appearances knowing that, hey, you know what? Yeah, this team is projected to make playoffs, but if I don't perform, we're not making playoffs. That's not on Jackson Merrill. He has five other guys that 
can carry that weight for him. So he can just come in and do his job. Yeah. Breaking the bigs is hard enough. Having the weight of the whole team on your shoulders is a different thing. And thankfully, he doesn't have that. Yeah, that's very true. So that's going to do it for today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be posting a Dodgers Padres you know, preview for this whole series. That'll be pretty exciting stuff. And then on both Wednesday and Thursday mornings, 7 a.m. Pacific time, I'll be going live. We'll see if Chase and Isaac are awake for that. Uh, but I will be going live both those, day, those, ga- those days post-game. So that's kind of our schedule for this week. We got this one. We got the video tomorrow on the, on the Padres-Dodgers series. And we got two live streams after that. So thank you all for listening. If you're not already subscribed, hit the, hit the, uh, the plus for subscribe. And uh, like, comment, let us know what you think. Can give us your, your Jackson Merrill projections for next year because I'm excited to see and I want to see like what people are actually thinking because I've just seen a lot of like crazy ideas. And, and that's probably not even like the majority of fans. You know, most people are probably like, yeah, you know, 740 is pretty good. Uh, but I am interested to see what people are thinking. So thank you all for listening and we'll talk to you all soon. See ya.